Proverbs uh, chapter 12. Uh, let's begin our, our reading this morning at uh, verse 16. Proverbs uh, chapter 12. Uh, let's begin reading at verse 16. We'll read down to verse uh, 20 this morning. As always, I appreciate so much you taking the time to, to join me. Proverbs chapter 12, begin reading with me at verse 16. A fool's anger is known at once, but a prudent man conceals dishonor. He who speaks truth tells what is right, but a false witness deceit. There's one who speaks rashly like the thrust of a sword, but the tongue of the wise brings healing. Truthful lips will be established forever, but a lying tongue is only for a moment. Deceit is in the heart of those who devise evil, but counselors of peace, Solomon says, have joy. You know, obviously there, there's no shortage of practical applications in this section of our reading today. Solomon, again, returning to a theme of, of self-control, controlling our speech. We talked a little bit about that yesterday as we explored the, the impact of our speech on our influence with, with, with one another from 1 Timothy chapter 4. Solomon here, though, again, he contrasts those who speak the truth and those who speak lies, speak deceit. Verse 20 speaks to where this lying and deceit originates. Another theme that we've seen throughout this collection of wisdom as it originates in the heart. Uh, verse 16, Solomon speaks to the fool and his lack of self-control, his impulsive reactions without thought. A, a wise man, though, just the opposite. But for our time this, this morning, I want to briefly consider with you verse 18 as we consider the power of the tongue, its potential for, for so much good, but also uh, for so much harm, so much bad. Read verse 18 with me. It says, there is one who speaks rashly like the thrust of a sword, but the tongue, the tongue of the wise brings healing. One version renders that there's one who speaks like the piercings of a sword, but the tongue of the, uh, of the wise promotes health. Have you ever encountered those who speak in such a way that it just hurts? Maybe not even always what they say, but how they say it. There's, it seems they, they just have a tendency to tear down with their words. They, they have a tendency to, that cause pain and hurt. And, and certainly we see this with the gossip, with the slander, those who bully and insult. We fill it with, with those who pride themselves in, in what they describe as telling it like it is. And, and most of the time I found that's just an excuse for people to be rude under the guise of, of strength. But, but brethren, we must face the fact that our words, the way in which we deliver them, they, they have the potential to hurt people. They have the potential to tear others down, to discourage. We can even be a stumbling block to those around us if, if we're not intentional by way of the words that we choose and even the manner in which we choose to deliver them. You've heard me say it before, and I'll continue to say it without apology. There's never an excuse not to be kind. There's never an excuse not to speak the truth in love, period. The excuse that that's just the way that, that he or she is. I've heard that all my life. That, that doesn't work. If a person is hurtful, if a person discourages others, if a person is, is harsh and, and arrogant by way of their speech and, and becomes a stumbling block to others, then that's wrong, period. Solomon, on the other hand, he describes the tongue of a person, the wise person who, who promotes health, just the opposite of hurt of piercings. There, there, there is a way in which we can speak, certainly speaking the truth that, that, that can bring good. It can bring healing. Certainly when we tell people about Jesus, it can be, it bring healing. When we build one another up with reminders from the word of God, that promotes healing. When we encourage the discouraged with a message of hope in Christ Jesus, that brings healing. A kind word, it promotes healing. A word of encouragement can bring about healing. Here's the good news. We choose our words. We choose the manner and the tone in which we deliver them. Remember, all of this originates in the hearts. So let's guard our hearts. Let's, let, let's continue to be intentional about allowing God's wisdom to become our own wisdom. Let's be intentional about that. But, but let's think before we speak. Let, let's be intentional about speaking the truth in love. Let's be encouragers. Let's use our mouths to bring about healing to those around us. That's God's way. It's a better way. Would you pray with me? Our Father in heaven, for another day in your word, Father, we are so very thankful, Father, for the guidance, for the wisdom, for the help, for the hope that it gives us, Father. What a blessing it is to our lives. We'd be lost without it. Father, we're thankful for your son, for his willingness to die on the cross for our sins, for our forgiveness, Father. What a wonderful blessing. May we never take it for granted. Father, we ask you especially this morning to be with the Miller family as they face this week and the loss of Sister Sonia's Mother, Father, bless them as only you can. Father, bless us, guard us, protect us, and guide us as we begin a new week. In Jesus' name, amen.